Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Developing right now in Dearborn, a man is killed by police. This after pulling a gun on officers inside the police station. What we're learning right now about the investigation. But we begin here tonight at 11 with a check of the weather as you take a live look at our downtown sky cam. The bitter cold continues right now all across Metro Detroit. Forewarned meteorologist Brian Sherman tracking big changes for the week ahead, including chances of a significant storm in time for the Christmas holiday. I know that you've been keeping an eye on it, so what's it looking like? Well, Pamela and Sandra, yeah, we're going to be keeping our eyes on that high impact winter storm for the end of the week. This evening, though, a much more tranquil picture than we've had all weekend long. Exact track 4D radar, clean sweep across all of southeastern Michigan. We may be seeing a few flurries that are flying under the radar, but outside of that, it is very cold if you're heading outside late tonight. 24 right now here in Detroit, 23 working into Ann Arbor, 27 over in Port Huron, and checking in at 23 right now as you're working working over into Adrian. The snow machine has pretty much shut off at this point. Cloud cover sticking around for the majority of the state through the mid to late evening hours tonight, and I'm expecting that to continue as we head into the beginning of our holiday week. While we'll start off into the 20s tomorrow morning, right around 30 by lunchtime on our way into the low to mid 30s by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon. And while we start the week tranquil in the weather department, we've got that high impact winter storm that's on the way starting Thursday, going through at least the start of the weekend with a little bit of everything, especially as we head toward Christmas. I'll break down what you can expect in your complete 41 forecast. That's coming up in just a few minutes. And with that winter storm on the way, now's the time to download that forewarn weather app, Exact Track 4D, Future Track, and Weather Alerts in the palm of your hand. You can find it in your favorite app store. Just search WDIV. All right, Brian, thank you. Now to a developing story out of Dearborn. One man is dead after he's shot by officers inside the Dearborn police station. The shooting happened around 3.30 this afternoon on Michigan Avenue at the front entrance of the police station. Police say the 33-year-old man was armed with a 9-millimeter handgun. He was killed after walking into the Dearborn Police Department. As Victor Williams reports, the man has a history of mental illness. Yeah, guys, talk about a day that will never be forgotten. This is what the Dearborn Police Department is going to look like for quite some time as the investigation continues. Many are asking, including the chief, who would want to take a gun inside of that building and start a very chaotic situation. The individual removed a concealed handgun and pointed the gun at a uniformed police officer behind the front desk. A shooting at Dearborn's police department takes the force by surprise, resulting in the death of a 33-year-old man. The lobby remains closed to the public as an initial investigation takes place. We're told that around 3.30 p.m., the man walked into the front lobby, pulled a handgun, pointing it directly at the first officer he saw. The individual attempted to fire the gun at the officer, prompting the officer to discharge multiple rounds that struck the individual. He later died at the hospital. No officers were harmed as a result of this incident. From that point on, officers worked to contain the situation. The road in front of the station blocked off for the investigation. A vehicle apparently belonging to the gunman was towed away. The motive still remains a mystery. I know there, there are many questions in the coming days. I hope there are more answers. And because this is an officer involved shooting, MSP is the lead agency in the investigation. I extend my sincerest condolences to the individual who lost his life here uh, this afternoon and to the officer that was involved in this tragic incident. And for the time being, the Dearborn Police Department is asking anyone that needs service to enter into the east side of the building. Use those glass doors while this lobby is closed. Victor Williams, Local 4. New at 11, no one is hurt after an apartment fire on Detroit's west side. This happened on Burt Road near I-96. We're told the fire was contained to the second floor. No word on what caused that fire. Over on Detroit's east side, police investigating after one person is found dead inside a car. This happened right around 830 in the area of Merlin and Cashew. Police say one person died there in that area. No word right now on a possible motive. 
The man charged in a case of ethnic intimidation at an Oakland County synagogue returns to the courtroom tomorrow. He does. His name is Hassan Shakur. He's facing charges after prosecutors say he shouted racist and anti-Semitic threats to people and children. This was outside of Temple Bethel in Bloomfield Hills. This happened back on December 2nd. Tomorrow's preliminary exam will determine if there is in fact enough evidence to go to trial. Meantime, Shakur's family and leaders from the Arab American Civil Rights League spoke about the incident earlier this afternoon in Dearborn. Family members say he suffers from mental health issues. Officials believe more mental health resources should be a priority. In addition to fighting bigotry, hatred and racism, we also need to address the mental health crisis affecting our communities, our region and our country. He also faces federal charges for allegedly lying on a form while trying to buy guns. The Zeckelman Holocaust Memorial Center is waiving admission until the end of the year, hoping to attract more people to push back after recent anti-Semitic incidents. On this first night of Hanukkah, our Grant Herms got a tour of the museum and has the story about why they want people to visit now, maybe more than ever. Michigan's only Holocaust Museum is waiving that admission fee because of the rise of anti-Semitism both last year and this year. They want to make sure that nobody loses sight of the lessons learned from the Holocaust. Inside the Ziegelman Holocaust Center are thousands of links to the past. Some big like the cattle car used to bring Jewish people to Nazi death camps. Some small like an Olympic pin each a story with a link to a person. The stories of more than six million Jews killed at the hands of hate. Ruth Bergman is the museum's director of education. And they drank coffee and they liked to go sledding and they studied and they had friends. From now until the end of the year, the museum is opening its doors and its exhibits for free to combat a wave of anti-Semitism across the country and Metro Detroit. Last year, incidents of anti-Semitism rose in Michigan by nearly 60 percent, according to the Anti-Defamation League, a trend that's only continued this year. The Holocaust wasn't a hurricane. It happened because people made choices. The museum is a look at the timeline of how the Holocaust happened, how vibrant, diverse communities were the targets of hate, and it's a look at the consequences of what happens by ignoring anti-Semitism when it's made known. Whether it's anti-Semitism or it's any kind of, of prejudice and hatred, when it becomes normalized, when saying terrible things out loud in public is considered to be just, you know, another day in America when these lies are spread and people aren't called out for them, um, then people get used to it. They think that that's the way it should be. Bergman knows that what the museum holds is heavy. A tour takes an emotional toll, but at the end, they want people to carry that weight because lifting something heavy only makes someone stronger. We want people to leave here empowered to speak up. The museum is open from Sunday to Friday until 3 p.m. on Fridays. They've also added another daily tour, one at 1030 and one at 1 p.m. In Farmington Hills, Grant Herms, Local 4. All right, thank you, Grant. January 6th Select Committee finalizing plans right now to issue criminal referrals for former President Donald Trump. Sources confirming to NBC News the committee met today to finalize those plans. The committee is actively considering to put forward recommendations of insurrection, obstruction, unofficial proceeding of Congress, and conspiracy. The committee is set to vote on its report and any potential referrals during a business meeting, which is in fact set for tomorrow afternoon. The final report is set to be released on Wednesday. Here at home, there are two freeway closures in Metro Detroit that will go into effect by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. We begin with I-94, both directions reopening from 75 to I-96. But keep in mind, traffic between the Lodge to I-75 will remain shut down through Tuesday morning. The southbound lanes of I-75 between Clark and Spring Wells, that will be reopening. The weekend closure was connected to ongoing construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Now to the Lions as they inch closer to a chance at the playoffs. It is exciting. The team traveled to New York, got a big win against the New York Jets. The win, in fact, the team's sixth in seven games, putting the team just a half game out of a wild card spot. Jamie is going to be coming up, and she's going to have complete highlights and also reaction for you from that big win. Stay with us for that. That is coming up on Sports Final Edition. So much more to come right here on Local 4 News at 11.